How's it going guys? Today we're going to be reviewing another interview question. We're going to do this again on leak code. Today we're going to go over a problem called binary tree longest consecutive sequence. And this is a question that's currently being asked by Google right now. Alright guys, so today we're going over another interview question. Today we're going to go over a question again on leak code as always. Uh, today the problem is called binary tree longest consecutive sequence and this is actually a question that's being asked by Google and Facebook right now. So it's definitely a good question to know. It's definitely a good question to go over. And our problem description says, given a binary tree, find the length of the longest consecutive sequence path. The path refers to any sequence of nodes from some starting node to any node in the tree along the parent-child connections. The longest consecutive path need to be from parent to child, cannot be the reverse. So meaning we have to go down the tree, we can't find connections up the tree. So if we were given this input in example one, so if we had the tree that looked like this, we would output three, and the reason for that is because they tell us the longest consecutive sequence path is from three to four to five, so we would return three, right? So that's three nodes along our path, so we're gonna return three, and again, the three nodes that make up that sequence is three, four, five, right? So four is one more than three, so it's formed in our chain. Five is one more than four, so it's also formed into our chain. So now we have three nodes that are consecutive in our sequence, so we'd return three. Now if we go to example two, and we had a tree that looked like this, we would output two, and they tell us that the longest consecutive path is two to three, not three to one, so we're gonna return two. So again, they're talking about this path here, two to three, and again, we can't go up, right? So it can't be one, two, three like that. So that's not a valid answer. And because of that, we have to go with the smaller path, I guess here, which would just be two to three. All right, guys, today I just wanna take a quick second to interrupt. And before we go into our solution for today's problem, I just wanna to introduce today's sponsor, Rooftop Slushy. Rooftop Slushy offers a whole suite of services like direct referrals, resume reviews, offer evaluations, and more to try and make sure that you guys can land jobs at places like Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. If you guys have trouble getting interviews at those kinds of places, this is the perfect service for you. For an average cost of $30, you guys can one, get a direct referral to any of these places from an actual Fang engineer who works at that company, or you can also actually ask for a resume review for a cost of $30 on average to make sure that you're tweaking your resume, you have it up to date, and you're putting your best foot forward to make sure that you guys get an interview with these companies. So if you guys are interested in checking out Rooftop Slushy, be sure to check the link in my description. It will give you 10% off your first purchase, and I really, really hope that you guys use it along with my channel to land your first job at Fang. So how do we solve this problem? Um, and let's just kind of talk about it quickly. So I think the first hint, and I feel like this happens a lot with tree problems, is that we're gonna use recursion to traverse the tree. Right, so that's the first part. We definitely want to basically traverse the entire tree here because we're always trying to find a longer consecutive sequence than we might have right now. So we're gonna use recursion to try and traverse the entire tree. And then once we can actually do that, right, once we get traverse the entire tree, we just need to figure out what we need to ask, right? Is What is the problem that we're trying to solve? And the problem that we're trying to solve is finding the longest consecutive sequence. So we know that if we're on a node that has value, let's say one, we need in our recursive call to find a node that has value two, right? Because the next recursive call is gonna go deeper into our tree. And if that node matches the previous node's value plus one, then we actually can form a sequence, right? A consecutive sequence. And then once we actually form these sequences, we just need to make sure that we're kept keeping track of the maximum at all times. And if we could basically traverse our entire tree asking that question, does this node's value match this node's value above it, right? Plus one, then we actually have a sequence. So we can keep asking that question as we traverse our tree, and we just need to update some sort of variable to keep track of our maximum that we've seen throughout the whole recursion. So what we first wanna do is just declare and initialize a return value, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and say int array max equals new int one. And a lot of people are probably uh, interested in our thinking, you know, Kevin, why are you actually initializing an integer array? Why can't you just initialize for, say, you know, for example, like an integer or primitive. And that's because we need this variable to actually exist in all of our recursive calls that are gonna come onto our stack. And the reason for that is because we need to have this variable available in any recursive call 
so that we could actually update it with the longest sequence that we found. So because this is an integer array, it's going to be allocated on the heap, and therefore it's going to be available in all of the recursive calls that we're going to make. So that's why we're going to use an integer array here, and this is again just going to keep track of the max sequence that we found. Great, so now if you guys watch my videos a lot, you guys are probably very sure how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to make a call to a recursive function, right? I always like to call it a magical recursive function that's going to do our work, and then all we should have to do is return whatever's in this max variable. So I'm going to call this recursive function find longest consecutive sequence, right? Because that's actually what it's going to do for us. And now we just need to think about the things that we have to pass it, right? Well, the first thing is we definitely have to pass a reference to the tree so we can traverse it. So I'm going to pass the root. And now the next thing that we need to think about is we need to count, right? We need to keep track of how many nodes are in the current sequence that we have. So I'm going to pass a zero that's going to, you know, basically symbolize or represent the count of how many nodes we have in our list or our sequence right now. The next thing we need to pass is a target, right? I need to know what value we're looking for in every single recursive call. But at this point, we actually don't know if we even have a root, right? Our root could be null, so I'm just going to pass an arbitrary zero. And that's going to represent kind of like this target value that we're looking for initially. Great. And then the last thing we need to pass is just our max, right? Because we need to make sure that we have that reference in that function so we can always update the max as need be. And then if we actually did this correctly, guys, all we'll have to do is return max of zero. Great. So now this problem really just boils down to traversing the tree, right? How are we going to traverse this tree and update this maximum that variable to always hold the longest consecutive sequence that we've seen? So because it's updating our max, we don't actually need to return anything. So I'll just say public void longest, or sorry, find longest consecutive sequence. And then we said we're going to take a tree node, we're calling it root. We're going to take an integer that represents the count, right? How many, how many nodes are in our consecutive sequence right now? We're also going to take another integer that's going to represent the target or whatever value that we're hoping this node in this recursive call its value is going to be equal to. And then we're also going to take an integer array called max that will just help us keep track of the maximum consecutive sequence we've seen throughout all of our recursive calls. Great. So now with recursive functions, right, we just need to keep track of two different things, or we need to have two different things. The first thing we need is a base case, right? We need to tell our recursion when to stop. And the second thing we need are recursive calls, or maybe a single recursive call, but we always need a recursive call as our second thing in recursive functions. So let's just stick with our base case for now. What is our base case, right? When do we want to stop our recursion? Well, we want to stop our recursion when we get to the bottom of the tree, right? When we're on a null node. So I could say if the root is null, we just want to return, right? We want to stop our recursion. There's nothing else to traverse. Well, okay, if we haven't hit our base case, what do we need to check, right? What problem are we trying to solve? we're trying to solve the problem of the longest consecutive sequence, right? So what we really care about in this problem and the meat of this problem is gonna be if the current node's value is equal to the target that we have. So I'll say else if root.val is equal to our target. And if that's the case, then we just need to increment the count, right? Because we want to include the current node within our current uh, consecutive sequence. So I'll say count plus plus, and otherwise, what happens if the current node is not null, but its target, its value does not match our target? Well, that just means that we've broken whatever consecutive sequence that we have currently, and we're going to keep looking starting from the current node that we're on, right? So that really means that the count gets reset to one here. So now once we actually have checked those three different conditions, we just have a couple more housekeeping things to do, right? One of which is making sure that we're always updating our max, right? So I want to make sure that I'm always reassigning my max to be whatever the maximum is between the max and whatever our current count is. Great. So now once we've done that, all we need to do is continue our recursion, right? We need to keep checking if we can add the next level to our consecutive sequence that we have. And if we can't, we just need to restart trying to find a new consecutive sequence from these two subtrees. So that just becomes as simple as saying, make a recursive call to the roots left child passing the count that we have, with the new target being the roots value plus one, right? Because now we want to say the next level has to match this node's value plus one. And then we just need to pass our max as well so that we make sure we always update it in those subsequent recursive calls. So I'm just going to copy and paste this now 
in say root dot right, right? Because we're going to traverse the current nodes left, left subtree and right subtree to make sure that we find the longest consecutive sequence throughout the whole tree. So now once these recursive calls all bottom back up to our top level recursive call, hopefully max zero, right? We'll actually store the maximum consecutive sequence that we've seen throughout the whole tree. So all we'll have to do is actually return it. So now to talk quickly about our runtime and our space complexity. Well, our runtime, we're just going to traverse the entire tree, right? We're going to go down the entire tree looking for this consecutive, longest consecutive sequence. So we'd say that we're traversing the entire tree. And if we said the tree had n nodes, we could say that the runtime is O of n. In terms of our space complexity, the worst case is going to be when we have like a giant linked list that just goes one way, which means that our recursive calls are going to be n levels deep. So therefore, we'd say that our space complexity is also O of n. So for this problem, our runtime is going to be O of n, and our space complexity is also going to be O of n. So now let's run this code. Let's make sure that it works. Awesome, and it does. All right, guys, that's how to solve binary tree longest consecutive sequence in Java. Again, this question is being asked by Google right now. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel below, and I'll see you guys next time.